Uh, yeah, so I would like to not keep you too long, so I keep it reasonably short. So, um, w I added a GC, no, I added a, uh, a GTK3 uh, VCL plug there last year for support of GTK3, which gives us Wayland support and gives us touchscreen support and things like that. That's in addition to a whole pile of other VCL plugs and cell instances. So I'll give a brief, brief overview of that. Uh, every platform has to implement a cell instance, and a cell instance uh, is your hook to allow you to create all the other things you need to make VCL work. So there's, you have to provide implementation of a cell frame, which is a top-level window, a printer, and then your virtual device, which is your off-screen buffer that you, print, that you render to and then copy to your final cell frame. Under X, uh, cell frame maps to an X11 window and a PIX map for the uh, virtual devices. And they all have to implement a whole pile of stuff. So the idea is that basically that there you just have to implement this for every platform, for every different cell instance. And you got your stuff like your drawing, line drawing and your rectangle drawing are a part of your cell graphics, which is part of this whole process. So I'll give you a little picture of what it looked like before the GTK3 one. Your cell instances has one for every platform. So you got one for Windows, you got one for, for Quartz, for, for Mac OS X. And then under uh, Linux, we can actually dynamically load each particular one, in which case we call them a VCL plug. So you have a generic one, which is just for X11. Next to nobody actually sees the generic one anymore unless something goes wrong with your system or you explicitly use it because we default to using the GTK2 one in the absence of everything else. There is a, um, a KD4 one. There was a KD3 one. The KD3 one uh, is basically removed, but there's a T uh, DE1, which is effectively still the KDE3. So that's the way it was before um, I brought in the GTK3 one. The GTK2 implementation inherits, as in that previous diagram, from the X11 one. So in a lot of cases, um, we didn't write anything specially for GTK2, we just reused the X11 one. And what's particularly of note is that we reused the old cut and paste code and we used, reused the old drag and drop code. That all comes from the uh, shared X11 base, and the printing is all shared as well. When we did the GTK3 one, while there was some overlap with GTK2, we could reuse a lot of the GTK2 code again, but because the underlying infrastructure has all changed, especially for the case of Wayland, we had to actually re-implement the drag and drop stuff, we had to re-implement the cut and paste stuff, basically using APIs that also existed in GTK2, but we never bothered to use them because we could reuse the X11 implementation. So now we have a full implementation in native GTK of drag and drop and cut and paste. Uh, also then we could no longer use the virtual device support for using, which is in GTK2 case was inherited from the X11 and use PIX maps. We had to replace all that as well. What we replaced them from basically is we re reused the code in the headless backend, the headless backend or the SVP, the Starview portal backend previously existed as a headless mode that could be used especially for converting documents. As time has gone on, this has been repurposed to become basically the basis for the Android port and the LibreOffice Lib Libre kit port as well, the tile rendering will render to effectively this headless backend. And that is a, a full VCL plug, but most things were stubbed out in the headless one. There is no true top level frames. The frames don't get resized and issues like that. What that implements and what we uh, reuse especially is that virtual device bitmap that you can render things to, to, to off screen and then move them around. So what we ended up with there for the GTK3 is that we still have the generic X11 one. We inherit from that for the TDE and the KD4 one. We inherit from that from the GTK2 one. We have this headless one that I've briefly described there. Android inherits from that. And then the GTK3 one is an unholy Frankenstein of re reusing the GTK2 code from GTK2, filling in all the blanks with new code, and then bringing in all of this headless rendering code uh, from the headless backend. And then we added a whole pile of stuff to the headless backend to make it render prettily, which has improved both the GTK3 support and the headless support, which improves the, um, the, the, the Android and the uh, 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 online case as well. As an aside, and as kind of context for where I'm going next is that originally for text layout, we would have a whole pile of text layout implementation spread across uh, VCL. 
So originally there was a simple layout for Linux text, then there was a ICU one using the ICU libraries, which was for complex text. That's all been replaced under Linux for quite a while now with a half buzz single one for both simple and complex text. There still exists a uh, layout engine for graphite fonts, for one, one especially generic for all platforms and then one specific one for graphite fonts under Windows. Outside of that, under Windows for font layout, we have a Uniscribe one for complex text and we still have a simple one for non-complex text. And back under Mac OS X, we have a, a core text layout. One of the Google Summer Code projects this year, uh, we, we hopefully Khaled is here someplace and will be tomorrow, is to unify all that text layout in together under half buzz for all platforms. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I don't think we actually have the resources to split our energies over that number of font shaping libraries. So we really should unify in one. Similarly, I don't really think that we have the same ability to spread our efforts over this many number of VCL plugs. I'm maintaining the GTK3 one because I have to, because it's where we are, and I'm pretty much one of the few people that can spend all my time doing that. I don't really have the time to invest in looking after GTK2 ones or the generic ones. Under text rendering, we also had a similar situation. We have multiple text renders. So for text layout, we're going the direction of one text layout. For text rendering under Linux, we've gone the direction of one text render. So I don't have the problem with multiple text rendering under different platforms. Um, what we have under graphic rendering then is that that SVP, that headless backend, which is used by GTK3, pretty much all of that has now been re-implemented to render uh, its graphics with Cairo. This is the 2D rendering, the simple rendering, the fallback if you don't have OpenGL like in the previous case. And in our case with GDK3, we haven't even implemented any of the um, OpenGL stuff yet, let alone the, uh, the optimized cases there. So that's the graphics rendering. Uh, SVP is rendered with Cairo. And then the generic graphics, the X11 ones, are rendered with X calls, except some cases where you can render with Cairo and then all that OpenGL stuff that was described in the previous case where it's rendered, some of the stuff is rendered with OpenGL, the fallback being X. So what I'd like to do, or what I, where I'm thinking and what I'm proposing, is that the top level X one, the Gen VCL plug, that we stop supporting that as something that you can actually explicitly instantiate. So either you have GTK3 or you have KDE4 or you have GTK2. If you have raw X11, you just have to install GTK2 at least. So you default to, the, default to GTK2 in the absence of anything else, and that's as far down as we support. This TD VCL plug, if we had never implemented KDE3 support, I don't think the TDE support would exist. So I'm suggesting that the TD stuff is really a dead end and, we're, and that's not going anywhere, and that we should actually just drop the TDE support. A lot of guys are thinking, well, what is TD? But, you know, I think we should just get rid of it. So that leaves us with the TD one gone. Uh, we have the X11 based, the Gen one, that still exists, but you can't instantiate it. And it stays as the base for the KD4 and the GTK2 one in that case. So that's pretty much the same picture. Then all that drawing stuff I described in the X11 one, the direct XLib drawing stuff, we would take the existing and hopefully okay stuff that we're using under GTK3 and the Android, and all, that, all that Cairo drawing. So we reuse all that Cairo drawing for our X drawing case as well. So we remove all of the old X drawing stuff and we replace it with the Cairo drawing stuff for that ultimate fallback. I'm leaving outside completely the OpenGL stuff there that can continue as it is without, without any change. This is just your base level uh, um, uh, bitmap drawing. That gives you a structure like that. You have a shared Cairo rendering for the, uh, the graphics. That simplifies a lot of graphics cases and hopefully gives a pretty much similar uh, graphics drawing for Linux case under all of those supported VCL plugs. They all draw the same way. As I described earlier, is that when the GTK2 implementation was done, it just inherited a whole pile of stuff from the X implementation because it didn't need to do anything else. When I went to do the GTK3 one, I had to implement all the cut and paste and drag and drop and all that stuff. So I would suggest that we would try and decouple the GTK2 stuff from the X implementation. All that stuff that implemented for GTK3, that uses APIs that still exist in GTK2, that we would just use those as well. That would mean that the GTK2 implementation and GTK3 implementation of cut and paste and drag and drop 
would be the new native GTK, GTK implementation that would then remove GTK from, from that, that hierarchy of X there. There would be some stuff left behind, but in general, that's the, the conceptual model. It would look pretty much like this. So you have your top level drawing, which is just Cairo, Cairo everywhere under Linux, no more X drawing. Then you come down here and you have a GTK base, which is all the shared GTK stuff. Then they have the GTK2 stuff, the GTK3 stuff. Both of these then are sharing the same drag and drop and the same cut and paste. Your headless stuff is unchanged. Your X11 stuff is unchanged, but it's no longer used by anything except KD4. KD4 will inherit from that. Now, I, I, I'm not working on KD4. I'm just saying that, you know, that does leave KD4 as a bit of an outlier there, you know. It's the thing that's using X directly. It's the thing that's inheriting from that X11 base. Now, that's, that's not my concern. I'm just saying that's the way to be left. So I'll just leave the, the KD thing alone. But any of that X11 stuff that's left over, that's only used by KD, you know, that just gets moved into KD directory and it becomes whoever wants to maintain KD, it becomes KD's problem in that sense. So it probably is the case that somebody in the KD world who has an interest in keeping LibreOffice working on KD would really want to invest some time uh, in that directory and port over all the bits to direct KD, direct KD APIs and avoid doing like we're doing in KD, uh, in GTK2 at the moment, inheriting from this, this shared X11 base. All right, so I'm claiming, I'm claiming there's a gain here. I'm claiming the gain is that there's one very, very simple underlying graphics rendering layer for Linux. It is just this uh, it currently GTK3 headless case becomes a default case for drawing graphics. And there's a whole bunch of little advantages there where there are optional VCL rendering paths that are tried first before falling back to underlying ones. They'd become always available. So there's a whole lot of code gain where all these, if this can't be done, try some terrible old way of doing it. That can all go. So you have one set of drawing there. The same rendering path for all of those uh, implementations. There's less code, there's less complexity, complexity. And that cut and paste and drag and drop that I've implemented for GDK3 would be effectively used in GDK2. And while I know there are some bugs in that, it would of course force me to fix those bugs. And they'd be the same problems under GDK2 and GDK3. I think it also helps pointing out that a lot of us developers that are just developing right now under Linux will get the GDK3 experience by default. That's what you're looking at every day. But then when people are installing the uh, install sets from the uh, testers, they are seeing the GTK2 uh, experience the whole time. So we're beginning to diverge. So our testers and our users are going down, and our daily users are going down one path, and the developers are going down another path. And try and bring this back together again. All right, so that's, I'll, I'll summarize at the end what I definitely want to do, what I'm doing. I'm then going to just put some other stuff in here to make this sound less, less scary, because this is like stuff that won't happen. But just saying that what could also be done is that for the daily bills and, and the eventual cases that you could end up deploying the whole thing maybe as a flat pack or as any other desire like that. That means that you can delete all the VCL plugs except the GTK3 one. The GTK3 one is then part of your flat pack. That gives you another solution of that kind of problem for the diverging experience. You can go the whole hog and you can port the whole thing to GTK3 under all platforms and spend your efforts on you know, making GTK3 uh, team, teaming work better under Mac OS X or, or, or Windows. That's another approach. You could do that. You could keep the file pickers. That's like, you know, your fundamental experience and the rest of it, you try and get away with teaming. Okay, to summarize then, the, the smaller stuff that it will probably do is that what you'd end up doing is that that, that gen back end, that, that wouldn't work anymore. You, you, you wouldn't see it directly. The, your X, the X drawing would go away and be replaced by the Cairo drawing that's been tested for, I suppose, a year or so in the other GTK3 and, and, and headless backends. That we'd move from taking the GTK2 away from that existing X11 implementation of drag and drop and cut and paste, especially, and, and other things like that. All the bits that are missing from GTK2, a lot of it can be repurposed from the GTK3 port. And then that we definitely drop the TD support as well. And then anything that remains unused after we run our usual process of finding unused code. Anything that remains used by a single uh, uh, VCL plug at KD4 gets moved over into KD4 and becomes, becomes part of that. So that's my proposal. I don't know if there's any, anybody has any 
strong views against that, but that's the way I'm thinking, and in the absence of any major complaints, that's probably what I'll do over the next 12 months. Okay, thank you. Any questions?